greetings by leading with power pals i'm so glad you're online with us today i want you to know that we're charging full ahead with a full fall program i've got speakers lined up can't wait to share with you the schedule it's going to be exciting but i'm glad you're here today because i have a chance to introduce you to my friend vince miller i can't recommend vince highly enough to you as a man of courage relentlessness faithfulness He's written a book that I've had a chance to have a sneak preview of called Call to Act. And I think you're going to find it to be the go-to men's leadership training manual. So you're going to have a chance at the end of the meeting today to order copies of this book. And I highly recommend you do that, not only for yourself, but think about a group of men that uh, you might want to meet with to go through that with. I hope that uh, you're inspired to do that. If you are looking for men to connect with, I do have a group that's meeting throughout this pandemic. Uh, and if you contact me at MRT43 at AOL.com, I can put you on to that if you're needing to meet together with some men. So let me know. But for now, enjoy and appreciate and take notes on my friend Vince Miller's presentation, Call to Act. All right, fellas. So uh, before we begin today, I'm just going to pray for us. Uh, first off, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it a ton. I know Keith does. Uh, I appreciate Keith so not, so so much. Uh, we're a ways away from each other, but uh, his com the camaraderie we share and the brotherhood is amazing. And I know he means that genuinely. If you're looking for a group to connect with, I would say connect with him, man. Uh, right now, we need brothers more than ever. So uh, let me pray, and then we'll dive in uh, today. God, I just want to thank you so much for uh, the opportunity to uh, connect with these guys online. Uh, God, as we as we dig in today, I pray that this time will bless these guys and and help them to understand what it looks like to become a man called to act. So, God, be with us today during this short time that we have together, and allow your people to be encouraged and move into action in their lives. Amen. Well, guys, uh, a couple of things here real quick. Um, I uh, sent you an email. It should have looked like this. You probably clicked this little button right here to join the event, which many of you did. If you click this link right here, it will take you, I'm just going to show you real quick. It'll take you to this page where you can actually order a book or many books if you like. Uh, if you complete this form, don't go to my website, go to this form, you will get discounted copies of books, $5 cheaper on here than on my website. And uh, if you order a copy, I will sign and autograph it and cheapen the value of it. So uh, if you want to purchase a copy, do that here. Just fill out this form, click submit. It will take you to a payment page on the next page. I'm actually going to sign all these books right after we get done uh, with this webinar. Uh, if you do order many copies, I will actually personalize one for you and then generally sign the others for other men. So if I pick two or more copies, then uh, I will sign one for you and then uh, generally sign them for everybody else. Uh, also, uh, Keith knows this already. I think he's probably offered this to you guys, but this is my website, bresolute.org. Uh, if you go here, obviously you'll see that I do have this book for sale, but there's also small group videos that go with this book, five of them, by the way, that go with each of the five uncomplicated disciplines. And I know there's guys out there probably watching right now who would love to lead a group of men through these studies. And I've told this to Keith a number of times, and I make this only available to leading with power men. But if you're wanting to lead other men using this small group series, I will give you access to our platform so you can play these videos. Other people pay for that. Uh, but if you want to use that, I'd be happy, happy to give you access to that. All you got to do is just reach out to me and I will give you access to this so that you can watch uh, those videos. So, uh, fellas, uh, thank you so much uh, for signing on today. Please keep that stuff in mind. You can pick up a copy of the book here. It's brand new. I'm going to actually walk you through pieces and parts of this book uh, today. Uh, as we uh, dive in. But uh, I got to tell you, I wrote this book uh, because, well, honestly, I think uh, spiritual growth is, well, frustrating uh, to many uh, men. And uh, I, I know that guys uh, really want to find a pathway 
to becoming a man who is called to act. And I know that you are a man that is called to act. But when I was writing this book, I wrote it because I think many men uh, find spiritual growth, well, terribly overcomplicated and honestly, way beyond their reach. Uh, So this book is designed to present a a clear and practical and understandable way for us to become men of action. Because I think many men, as I've talked to men all all across the world, I think they stall out when faced with spiritual development. Men see spiritual development as, well, this monumental task. And yet most men, I think, really want to grow in their faith. I think they really do. I think some people would disagree with that. But as I meet men, I think they're ready to kind of leap out of the boat, kind of like Peter. Uh, They want to get out of the boat and they want to experience the adventure of jumping into the waters of faith. But here's the deal. They hesitate. And I think they hesitate because they honestly feel overwhelmed and unsure of what to do. So many never end up taking that leap because they're afraid to admit these two things. They don't know where to turn or what to do. And I think that first step stumps many men. Therefore, they kind of, they stall out. And like a man lost, looking for direction, they're unsure of where to turn. And you know, guys, they don't stop to ask for directions, right? (laughs) Uh, They don't like to ask for directions. And I think this is especially true when it comes to a man's faith. Because if he stops to ask for directions, it makes him feel kind of shameful. And by the way, men like to be self-sufficient. They like to figure things out on their own. (laughs) But left unaddressed in our spiritual life, if we continue to not ask for directions because, well, we're too self-sufficient or we're too ashamed, well, this ends up, I think, in a terminal stall for a man who wants to grow. Hesitation quickly becomes apathy, resulting in men that do nothing and say nothing about their need for spiritual growth and development. (laughs) And if you know me, I always turn back to the beginning of the Bible to talk about our issues as men. And one of our major issues is apathy. We, in the face of sin, did nothing and said nothing in the face of sin. But we also do this when it comes to spiritual development. We, We do nothing and say nothing about our need to be better men. And we're afraid to admit that we don't know where to turn for help. Now, I got to tell you this because I'm only going to say this to leading with power men, especially to Keith's group, but I'm going to tell you something that I think Keith would probably tremendously agree with. You know, as I have traveled the world and as I speak to men, I frequently, frequently encounter men's leaders and pastors who are irritated by what I call spam, spam, spam stands for Spiritual pattern, apathetic men. (laughs) So I call them spam, right? And I find that these pastors, men's leaders, directors, whoever they are, are perpetually irritated by spam. Spiritually patterned, apathetic men, right? And and some of these leaders that I've met are actually at their wit's end. They, They come to me terribly irritated about today's man. And they get so irritated about it, they, they punt on reaching out to men. In other words, they don't even waste their time reaching out to men anymore. And why? Because, well, women are far more responsive, right? <laughs> they invest their, their time and their treasure and their talent uh, in women who they see as more engaged and willing and available and who sometimes push through the hesitations of the spiritual life. Uh, with uh, more fervent, I guess. And they're just a little bit more fervent about the walk. And many of these leaders discuss these irritations with me and in their frustrations about male pattern apathy, they just try to shame men for their passivity, indifference, and apathy. But I, I don't think this is really healthy or helpful, right? I don't think punting on reaching men is appropriate. I don't think shaming men for not engaging is appropriate. I don't think even ignoring the issues with men is the answer. I believe, and I wrote this book because I believe that we need a better way for men to engage. We just need a better way completely. And fellas, uh, if we could get men called to act to move into action, dude, we could create a worldwide movement of men. Now, 
See, I believe that the issues and solutions to getting men to become men who are called to act is really simpler than we thought. I believe that when we focus on the wrong issues, when it comes to men's spiritual development, uh, we then thus fail to help men overcome uh, the complexity. You see, I think men are, are vastly complex but they need simple explanations. They're vastly complex. And I actually think men are far more complicated than the world thinks. And they need simple ways to understand things, simple solutions that are straightforward, clear, so that it decreases their impulse to hesitate because they're ready to act. You know, uh, I recently bought my, my son a new iPhone. His birthday's coming up. So he's getting a new uh, iPhone for his birthday. And uh, he doesn't know it yet, but it came in the mail the other day. And, you know, you open up an iPhone and like it's ready to use, right? You get the box, you open it up, you unwrap it. It's already charged. You turn it on and it kind of walks you through a few simple steps and then you're ready to use it. I think men like I think men are think like this. They're like ready to go. <laughs> they want to do something. And when you make the process too complicated, it creates a hesitation that frustrates men and then keeps them from action. And I think this is really the spiritual issue with most men. I actually think most men need solutions that actually give men spiritual confidence and take the need to ask for all the directions off the table. And what I'm suggesting is this, is that pastors, teachers, and leaders have actually made the process of spiritual development overcomplicated for men. They make it too theoretical at times, too conceptual, too theological, which I think in turn develops hesitant and apathetic men. Now, I don't think it's wrong to be theoretical, conceptual, and theological. I don't know how I muted myself. <laughs> My wife wishes she had that button, fellas. <laughs> if we could only do this in real life, right? Click the little mute button. Well, anyway, I believe wholeheartedly that men want to grow. And they have even been inspired to grow. <laughs> Good job, Sean. <laughs> and, and let's be honest, you know, if, if we could hear simple ways to grow in our faith, man, imagine what it would look like if a man could move into action quickly. I think men are like lost travelers, right? They need someone to explain the scripture to them and be told what to do. And this is the bottom line for men. They need to be told what to do. And I have discovered, even through a lot of the resources that I've developed, if you tell a man what to do, there's a higher likelihood that he will actually do it. It's not because men are stupid. It's not because they're slow. It's not because they're slothful. But because this is how a man learns. This is actually how he learns. Tell a man exactly what to do. And the probability goes way up that he'll actually do it. And it may not be perfect, but he won't be perplexed, fellas. Now, I want to dig into a little bit of text today because I think this is so critical, so critical. Uh, I'm going to jump into the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And the reason why I want to jump to the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7 is because Jesus understood this about men. Jesus was very, very intelligent. He could have talked in theoretical language. He could have talked only conceptually. He could have talked theologically all the time. But I believe God sent Jesus Christ to this earth to uncomplicate everything that we had made complicated. In fact, everything that religious leaders made complicated. And in the Sermon on the Mount, which I would suggest is the greatest sermon ever preached, what Jesus does is this, is he takes everything that religious leaders had made overly complicated and all their laws and all their regulations. And he uncomplicated it by pushing it farther and harder and making it simple. And at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, the end of the greatest sermon ever told, he comes to the pinnacle of this moment. And here's what he says. He says this, everyone then who hears these words of mine, hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house where? On the rock. 
and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who builds his house on the sand, right? And the rains came and the floods came, the rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Now, there's a reason why I read that text to you today is because at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus makes everything simple. He says, here's the deal. You want to grow spiritually, this is it. There, there is no other thing that you need to be concerned about. You need to do this. You have two choices. You can hear and not act, or you can hear and you can act, and that's it. Because here's the deal. Everybody hears. That's what he says in this text. Everybody hears. But there's two ways that we can respond to the hearing. We can respond by doing nothing or doing something, right? And Jesus in this teaching is comparing the one who hears and doesn't act to the foolish man and the one who hears and acts to the wise man. And then he describes this, and it's critical. He says there's a a storm, and a same storm hits both men or both houses, yet they're founded in two different areas And the wind and the rain and the storm and the floods exposes, what does it expose? It exposes the integrity, the deep integrity of the house and exposes the delta between the man who hears and doesn't act and the man who hears and does act. Now, see how simple Jesus made everything here? He didn't make everything complicated. He didn't give us 600 plus rules and regulations. In fact, he dismantled all of them. He said to men everywhere, You got two choices. You hear and don't act, or you hear and do act. And it's called integrity in the deepest level. It's not just integrity between what we hear and say, because Jesus is actually (laughs) saying that you can try to fuse all you want, what you hear and say together, but still be a hypocrite, right? Because he is like demolishing hypocrisy in this moment. He's saying there are men out there that hear and say, but they have not truly integrated. And there are people that hear and say and even do, right? And can look like they're religious, but they're not integrated because they're like people who hear and don't do. There's another level of doing is why. There's hearing and saying that's integrated to your doing, but also to your motivation. And that's what Jesus is after here. Jesus is both simple and complex and deep all at the same time. But he makes it so simple because what he wants men to do is to act and to act at the deepest level. From the motivation to the action to the things that we said are all integrated deep into the deepest unseen part of ourselves, which is our motivation, so that we can become men who are called to act. So that is the premise of this book. The premise is to make simple everything Jesus actually made simple. All we got to do is hear and act upon the word of God to become men of God at the deepest level. So this book is is broken into a couple of parts here. Uh, Make it real simple, part one and part two, (laughs) okay? So part one, I deal with the search for a man, how God, I believe, throughout the entire Bible was actually searching for a man. In fact, at the beginning of time, God saw that as he created man, that's you and me, fellas, that he created us with dominion, power, authority, voice, and a single moral rule in hopes that we would become men called to act. And of course, we understand we hesitated. The ultimate fail of all times, chapter three of the Bible. Now, the story continues throughout the Old Testament, where I believe God was looking for a man, actually searching for one. Ezekiel 33, 20 talks about this, that he looked for a man and sought for one to stand in the gap, but could not find one, zero, goose egg, none. And yet his search comes to an end in the New Testament in God's self-provision. Jesus Christ, the ultimate man, right? Jesus Christ is the prototype for all men. And Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount teaches men how to become now men called to act. All we got to do is hear and act, not just with our mouth and our action, but our motivation at the deepest level. In the following chapters, I talk about like why we hesitate as men, and there's all kinds of reasons why we hesitate. I then talk about the essentials of how to listen, 
it, I think in one of the great chapters of this book, I talk about the five voices that all men hear. Voice one, the man that we think that we are. Voice two, the man that others think that we are. Voice three, the man that we think that others think that we are. Voice four, the man that we actually are, which is sinful and broken, Romans chapter seven. And then voice five, the man that God wants us to be. And I think men struggle with becoming men called to act because they've got all these other competing voices coming at them all the time. Whether they're young men in high school, in college, in a career for the first time, newly married, with kids, retired, grandkids, it doesn't really matter. Regardless of your age or stage or phase of life, I believe these other four voices that men hear, the man that we think that we are, the arrogant man, the man that others think that we are, the wonderful plan that others have for our life, the man that we think that others think that we are, this is the man that we contemplate in our bed late at night, right, that we become paralyzed by, the man that we actually are, Romans 7, broken, fallen, beat up by sin. We hear these other voices loudly all throughout the day. They are like clanging symbols to us sometimes, and they paralyze men. They keep us from acting. But what God wants us to understand is the man that we actually are in him, in Christ. We're redeemed, love, full of grace and mercy, and this is the man that God wants us to be. And we've got to live listening to this voice more than all the other four voices. Because if we can learn to listen to this voice, man, we can become incredible men. Now, this is not the power of positive thinking, by the way. This is actually listening to the voice of God and becoming the man that we already are in him. It's assuming our identity in him and muting all these other voices that we always hear. Now, in chapter two of the book, this is where I begin to talk about the fundamentals. Now, I, I think for men, uh, we need to keep things really, really simple. And for us to understand that in part one, yes, God's searching for a man. Man needs to listen. We're hesitant. We need to understand how to listen and all these other competing voices. I get all this, right? We understand all this. But in chapter two, I talk about how we actually listen and act. And I give men five disciplines. That's it, just five not a list of 30, and I know there's great classic books out there on all kinds of discipline. They're amazing. But I think you got to keep it simple for men. I give men five disciplines that I believe help us to hear and act, hear and act. Because, gentlemen, abiding in Christ is not a passive activity. It's not a passive activity. We actually need to get engaged on a regular basis, if not daily and moment by moment. Simple, basic disciplines that help us to hear and act. My five disciplines are this, prayer and scripture, which I call really more of the personal, not just private, but personal disciplines, ones that we really do on our own. So prayer and scripture, and then the, what I call public, more public disciplines, which are brotherhood, scripture, and ministry. And what I do in each one of these chapters is I talk about what makes that discipline complicated and then I help men to understand it in an uncomplicated fashion so that they will do it on a, a regular basis. Uh, so, guys, that's the essence of it. And I believe uh, spiritual disciplines like this, when applied in a man's life over a long period of time, help us to weed out, I would say, the voices of a very loud world and help us to tune more in to the spiritual, the spiritual man that God wants us to be. But we have to apply them in a regular rhythm that is simple over a long period of time. Now, I use these disciplines in my life all the time. Prayer, scripture, brotherhood, accountability, and ministry. And on a regular basis, I'm applying them daily, daily to my life. I will let you know that I've done all five today just with simple repetition without making it overcomplicated and without feeling like I've got to expend an extensive amount of time on any single one. And I believe that if we could create a movement of men, that's you guys, the 15 who are on right now, and me together, if we could create a movement of men engaged in these spiritual disciplines, then men would more readily hear from God and respond to him. But as I reference the stories and the scriptures 
within this book and the teachings of Jesus. I think Jesus had been teaching us how to do these things as he walked with men. That was his goal. He came to earth, not only to just present the gospel, but actually to walk with 12 men and to impart to them fundamentals that they would carry with them throughout the rest of their life that help them to understand what active abiding in Christ looked like regularly. So, fellas, the focus of this book is to uncomplicated, uncomplicate the complicated activities of our faith so that men will more clearly understand how to hear and respond with immediacy, with immediacy to Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I'm going to stop there maybe for a couple of minutes and see if you guys uh, have any questions. If you have any questions here, let me know other than that the volume went away. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions out there today that you want to ask me? All right, fellas. Well, uh, Keith, thanks for uh, letting me be here with you today. Uh, you guys that are on here with me, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for, for joining us. I know that we're probably getting a little bit tired of some of these, uh, these sessions online, but uh, this is a blessing to me. Uh, Keith, thank you for hosting uh, this time. I look forward to actually being with you guys in person. As you heard Keith, said, Keith, Keith say, uh, we're going to be back live and, and better than ever in the fall. And so, hey, I love you guys. Uh, be a man called to act today. If you'd like to purchase a copy of the book, do so at that link that I shared with you. And uh, have a blessed day.